Happy Mother's Day. I've been following some of the posts on Facebook and I know that for many of you thinking about your mothers, it's actually more complicated than that. So it seems like mistakes is a really good theme as we think about our relationships with our own mothers. You know, I've talked before in this community about how my father was something of a bully who pretty much determined what would go on and what would not happen in my family. And so much of my early anger about my childhood was directed at my father. But as I began to get older, I started to get mad at my mother for never standing up to him, for never stopping him, for allowing him to be a bully. And I started rooting for her to leave that relationship, which she never did, by the way. And so as she was dying, still in that marriage, I thought it would be helpful if she came with me to visit my therapist so that we could do some healing so that I could let go when she died and not harbor some of the resentment that I did about her life choices, about some of the mistakes that she made. And what I intended to do in that therapy session was to tell her my opinion about the mistakes that she'd made, many of the things that I had thought but never said. I thought that telling her about all of those mistakes was the path towards healing. I'm not even gonna talk about forgiveness now. That's our theme in September and we'll talk about it then. I'm talking just about my own healing and moving on even as I let go of her on the planet. So we went to therapy and I still remember she dressed up and she always did. My mother always looked good. She wore pearls and a beautiful pink flowered dress and she just looked good. She looked good until her death really. She was a fashion plate dressed in cheap clothing. A track, I inherited the cheap clothing, not the fashion plate part from her. But at any rate, we went to therapy and I prepared my list in advance of all the things I wanted to talk to her about. To my surprise though, that's not what happened in the session. And what did happen was so much more healing and important for me. My mother began to talk the minute we got in there. She clearly had a long list of things she wanted to talk about, about mistakes that she made. And she felt very sorry about mistakes that she'd made. But more importantly than that, it turned out it wasn't an apology that I needed from my mother. What she did that was such a gift for me was emerge as her own human being, not the larger than life superhero that every child sees as their parent, no matter how imperfect, no matter how cruel even that parent may be, it is part of our wiring to imprint on that parent as God because when we are tiny, they are so much larger than us. What my mother did in that session was talk about her own childhood, the loneliness that she had, a very cruel mother that she had. And she said her father really adored her and that really made her mother angry. And when her father died, she said she remembered not only the sorrow about losing this man who she loved so much, but also this deep terror of, uh-oh, what would her life be like now just with her mother, without her father, to try to protect her a little bit from her mother's anger and her mother's cruelty, really. She told stories about her own childhood and some of the things that her mother had done. And most poignantly to me, she described one day when her father and one of her mother's sisters, who she adored, her aunt, took her together to buy shoes for school. She said she pretended that they were her parents because in that threesome, she felt happy and safe and secure. For me, it was coming to understand that my mother had held to one visit to a shoe store her entire life as the time when she felt loved and cherished by two adults. And in that telling and in all of the stories she told, what I saw as I saw her was someone who gave. 
someone who gave me and my siblings so much more than she was given herself. And in that seeing her as a whole person, any resentment that I had, anything that I was angry about fell away and I felt pure love for her. And when she died, there was adoration really. I cared for her in those final weeks with cherishing love as she had lavished on me as an infant with absolutely no ambivalence. That kind of healing isn't always possible because people won't always acknowledge their own story. They won't always tell us. My father died without ever telling me what was his story that made him the way he was, and I know he had one. But when people, any people, our mother or anyone else, makes a mistake, treats us in a way that we don't like, perhaps one thing we can do to move towards healing is to tell ourselves that they're doing the best that they can and that we don't know the story behind why they are behaving the way that they are behaving. And to tell ourselves that for some reason they need to make those mistakes. That doesn't mean that we don't speak up on our own behalf. That doesn't mean that we're not angry. It simply means that we are in a web of imperfection, that we make mistakes and other people do, and that even our mothers, even our mothers deep down are just the same bumbling along kids that we all feel we are, no matter what our age. So happy Mother's Day. May this be a day when you are allowed to make mistakes yourself, when you acknowledge and accept and seek healing in the web of mistakes that others have made, and when you claim what you deserve, which is love and care, and you get that where you can. Don't make a mistake about that. Happy Mother's Day.